Welcome, Amanda here, and I'm a maker with Close to My Heart, and this week's Fun Fold Friday is a gatefold, and it's featuring the Isabella Papers. And a gatefold card is so versatile and yet easy, and you can do it so many different ways. I'm just doing the basic where the two sides fold into the center and one side folds or one flap has a sentiment or an image that overlaps the other side. At the end of the video are some more um, samples that I do a little differently with different size folds. So I just love the gatefold. It's so versatile. The pieces of paper that you're seeing me pull out, these were left over from a layout that I did with this Isabella paper and some of the along with the Cricut cuts of the hexagons and the daisies and other um, the dye leaves that I also used in the creating of a layout and if you want to see that double page layout I will leave a link here also in the description so here is the cherry blossom stamp set which I absolutely love I'm just using the word smile from it. I'm not going to use any of the floral images, which are just stunning. And on the front of the card, I will have you make me that also comes with the stamp set and then smile on the inside. And all that I did when I brushed the edges of the center white sheet on the ink pad was it just gives it like a feathered um, row of ink. So it's not like a sharp line, but it's just a nice feathered effect. I'm taking some of the scraps from where I cut those hexagons on the Cricut and there was just strips around the outside of the paper that I cut and include in my bag. So I'm celebrating my stash or using my scraps as I like to say and just going to accent the center sentiment piece so that the outside and the inside are both decorated. This you can't hardly see it but it has like a yellow hash mark on it and then I will use this pink ballerina cardstock that's also left and make a banner end to that and add it in as well. These gatefold cards, like I said, are so versatile. You can have one flap a lot bigger, one flap a lot um, smaller. You can have them top and bottom, left to right. There's so many different ways to fold the outside flaps of your cards towards the center and that's really all you're doing so you can decide how you want to shape that and then you can decide how you want to decorate it and one of the ones that I have at the end I have I think it's a one inch maybe one and a quarter inch flap but when you open it up I decorated that little flap on the inside I was using the cherry blossoms with that as well because I love that stamp set just gonna glue the center sentiment and where it allows me some room to write a little note and sometimes I like to write a light and sometimes it's nice to just be able to write a little bit say hi and get this in the mail I'm taking pieces from the hexagons that were left over and I'm using my ruler just so that I can make sure that those points are at the same level across the card and just gives it some interest I had tried putting more pattern papers on the inside but it just got a little busy here I'm going to just kind of dry fit and see what um, pattern papers go where and I bring in some more of the hexagons so that I have the right shapes and I'm like I said I'm just kind of dry fitting and see what's gonna work what I can use up of those scraps I'll end up cutting the outside edges off as well and um, if you don't if you're unfamiliar with close to my heart cardstock it's two tones so there's the actual color on one side and then a I'll call it a second generation or a slightly lighter version of that same color on the back side so that really gives you some versatility with the cardstock now I know what direction I'm going in I'm gonna glue my center piece down first and you'll notice I'm only putting glue on just shy of half of that hexagon I'm just eyeballing where the center is and gluing it down um, I'm not sure if I do it on the camera but I normally open up to make sure that there's not glue on the inside because I have glued my cards together in the past and it's not fun it gives you a nice embellishment opportunity that sometimes you just don't want to have to deal with but today I was because I had the points at both the top and the bottom I was sure to make the glue just on the inside of that line and I open it up so that I can press the glue down more and here I am seeing if there's some glue on the outside edge 
and rubbing it off. And I don't know if you noticed, the pink's a little hard to see, but I wanted to make sure that I was using the dark side of the ballerina cardstock. And I will cut the edges off of this so that I can work with the other side. I'm gonna jump ahead here and you'll see that I'm finishing up by cutting the outside of the second half where I added all the pieces to that side. So there we have the front of our card. I think it's looking great already without a lot of work. And I had cut some of the stitched tags, not tags, um, I can't think of what they're called. They're kind of like sentiment outlines. And I had a couple of them on my desk and I didn't end up using any of them. They didn't work with what I was doing. So I'm just stamping the You Make Me right on the front of the cardstock. And it's a little risky to do that, but if you just if you've practiced with stamping and you know to ink it up well and to let the the stamp stay on the paper before you pull it up you will get a good stamp most of the time close to my heart acrylics are really good for that now i'm just pulling out some of the die cut leaves these this was a layered leaves um thin cut that we had and it sold out right away but i absolutely love these especially with the daisies so these again were leftovers from the layout that I did. And I'm just having fun auditioning where different pieces will go. You can see that I slipped that leaf underneath on the right panel and I slipped it under the, I call it the sentiment piece, but it's kind of the feature of the front of the card because it's okay, it, it can go under there. And then when you open that front, you will see the full leaf. I like to use liquid glue when adhering leaves and that to the daisies and especially on layouts I like to use the tape runner when adhering it to the actual page um, just because then it's the tape runner is a little easier to remove if you need to adjust the placement on a card it's not as important um, once you use the liquid glue though it's welded together um, to get it off a lot of times it requires ripping cardstock from one side or the other. You will see this card comes together pretty quickly once I decide how I want these flowers to be laid out. And you can add, um, like I know the twirls of, of thread are really popular. I decided to just make a bow out of this white and gold ribbon that I had on my desk again from the layout I did. Um, and I, if you didn't catch that, I just put a glue dot on the back of that bow and I adhered it to my piercing tool so after I get these daisies glued down I can use the piercing tool and kind of slip it right up underneath some of the petals and get it into place while I use my other hand to kind of hold up some of the petals so just makes it easy to work and then I just twist the piercing tool to remove the glue dot and that bow from my tool these are leftover bashful pearls from a while ago, so I'm celebrating my stash. And I just add those to the front and it finishes out the card. So this is the one card here. I did it with, I think this is called Outback Paper. And um, then this has the cherry blossom on it. And this is an old Emporium paper, but I show where I did the a ribbon along the inside. And if you do that, your front flap needs to be popped up a little bit. If you haven't subscribed to my channel and you don't want to miss any of the videos for a fun fold Friday or for the layouts, layouts come out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays typically. And here's another video. Hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.